this camera has been out for almost a year. I actually <laughs> was so excited about it, I started taking the plastic off of the carbon. This is the Insta360X Plus, a 512 uh, gigabyte Samsung Pro Plus card. So this video, let's crack it out of the box. Let's see how she comes out. Yeah. Thicker than I thought it was. It's actually a pretty decent sized candy bar. Yeah, yeah, I think it's actually heavier than my, my GoPro. So USB A to USB C cable. Oh, they do give you a nice little pouch, storage pouch. Nice lens cleaning cloth in there that you can stick in the bag with it. And then some instruction manual book, Insta360 stickers. The battery's obviously already in it. It's right here. Pull this guy open. So there's the actual battery itself. So nice seal battery. Um, so you can pull that out and put a different battery in. I would assume that's where the memory card goes. No, that's probably USB-C port. There it is. That's USB-C port. I bet the memory card access is in here. Yes, it is. It's right in the battery compartment. So I gotta get a pair of scissors. Okay, I'm gonna go in Samsung facing up. Now I haven't charged this battery, but I'm sure it comes with a charge. I do like the fact that it's really easy to tell if one of these clips is not in with that little red. So you push it in, boom. And then you know you're at least waterproof or water resistant, right? That said, we are memory card in and there is a power button and a Q button on the side. Figure out what that does. Push and hold the power button. It's like she's booting up. Okay, so now I'm gonna open up the Insta360 amp. Let's find out what the next process is or accept the user agreement. Yes, I do have an Insta360 camera, hit yes. I'm gonna turn on all these access, so that I'm access to all everything, local network, sure, notifications, why not? Got them all on there. And it looks like it found the camera automatically. Let's hit connect. Connect to app. I'm gonna hit the check mark over on the camera itself. And basically now it's ready to start filming. Uh, the thing that, like I said, where, where I purchased at Best Buy today, they didn't have any accessories that were Insta360 accessories. Now they do make, um, several poles and stuff that you can uh, put this put onto this that are small enough to fit the bottom of the actual camera so that it actually erases it from the video footage. So it's it basically an invisible pole, which is something that I think if you're gonna have this camera, you're gonna want it. Um, so right now I don't have that, but I do have a, a pole from Sandmark. So this one is one I've had for my GoPros or uh, my cell phone or whatever. I've had this for actually several years and I don't use it all the time, but the nice thing is the actual quarter 20 end, the actual pole itself is the right thickness, I think. So this pole will also work, I believe. You can see it's actually uh, thinner. Of course, time will tell. Still have these that are, that are bigger, but um, I did want to at least start with this pole to see how it actually would work. So I'll come to that eventually here at the end, but um, I do want to kick this on and this camera um, you can use the button so the we have the quick button down here the power button like I said before but then we also have the um, shutter button and then this I think what they call the lens button uh, shutter button obviously is going to start and stop recording or take a video or take a photo or whatever depending on what mode you're in so if we swipe we can go you know between um, no video, HDR video, time lapse, time shift, bullet time, loop recording, let's see, star lap, burst mode, interval, photo HDR, photo, and then back to video. So that's our modes that we can choose to, to shoot in. We can also do single lens mode and uh, do video, me mode, loop recording, photo, or video. So you can choose between the 360 and, and single lens right there at the top. Let's hit lens, switching to single lens oh there we go so you can see it's just showing the single lens if i hit it again switching to other lens hit it again switching to 360 mode so essentially that lens button goes between either seeing this lens seeing this lens or seeing the 360 and then we should be able to tap and hold and then once it goes down we can actually cycle around and actually see what's going on here so you can see me on the video there and then uh, once we frame our shot, we can push and hold or put tap, or is it push and hold again? Oh, there's an X. I can't see it from back here. And now it's actually framed. So when I hit start recording, I'm going to be in the center frame of that. I am doing a 360 video right there, but then tap again and we're done. Well, let's go into the quick menu, see what that does. Quick menu, skiing, customize. So you can actually have different modes. So you can choose me mode at 1080p or whatever. Um, or 5 point, you know, 5.7K or whatever. And you can save these in the customized modes so you can quickly and easily change over to your favorite settings without going through each of the settings every time. That's pretty cool. And then of course you have your power button. Looks like if I push the power button, it goes to kind of sleep, but you can see it's still on. 
I can see the button, the, the lights. Click the power button again, comes right back up. If I push and hold the power button, she will actually shut down. The gist of the Insta360 X3, and yeah, it definitely works with this pole. So in all reality, when you're looking for a pole, if you don't wanna buy Insta360's actual pole, quarter 20 thread, and just make sure that the pole itself is at or around the same thickness of the camera because that's your stitch point, right? This, the thickness of this camera is the stitch point. Um, whereas we're going to have any kind of degradation of the video feed or anything is going to be around the outside edge of the camera because the one lens is here, the other lens is here, and it's, it's the, between the two. That's the magic area to make disappear. Pretty cool. Now, this camera is, I think, my fourth or fifth 360 camera I've owned. Every single one was a little bit different, and every single one I felt was a little bit better than the last one. Now, the last one I had was the GoPro Hero Max, which, to be honest, I loved. I, I really did. However, the amount of time you spend editing the 360 video versus I take my GoPro Hero uh, 10 Black here and just shoot, I already pre-framed it. Now it's just me editing the, the footage. And that's the big kicker difference between a standard action camera and a 360 camera. The 360 camera, I don't have to care about framing right away. I can shoot 360 video and I can frame it later. The big benefit is that if it's a, uh, if you're shooting uh, footage of an area that you don't know what's gonna happen, you don't know where to point the camera at, you're constantly looking at what to take the video of, that's where the 360 cameras come in because you're, you're, you're framing the shot in post-production. You're, you're capturing everything and then you frame it later. Whereas the Hero 10 or any action camera, any standard camera that's not a 360 essentially, you are framing it at the time you're shooting the video. All you have to care about is editing down to what you do or don't want. You can't change that frame, right? I, I'm not, I can't shoot anything other than what the camera sees. Editing in a standard video is way easier than the 360 shots because at the same time, I can edit this with any program out there, right? Any video program. Whereas the 360 shot, you're probably gonna have to stick with with what can edit the 360 video sh that you shot. So in, in this case, the Insta360 app is probably gonna be your best bet. You're gonna do all the framing in that and you're gonna output that. So that's what you're getting to get in a 360 camera. So just to so you know where you're shooting. Now I don't have a review of this camera because I literally just got it. It's about time for me to start playing around with it. I know I have a trip coming up and I, I would like to have it because knowing from trips past, having a 360 camera is actually pretty cool. And I have some ideas, maybe some pretty cool shots that I can get with my kids and my wife. So thank you for watching to the end of this video. We'll catch you back here on, on Geek Smart or on Tech Cooch for another future video setup, review, or tutorial. We'll see you soon.